If you're anything like me, then you struggled at first making your KDP covers. And maybe you're trying to find a video that's gonna help you stand out, make something different than everybody else, but all you keep running into is the same old, same old, same old. Well, I'm here to show you my secret. I design and procreate. They're beautiful, they're easy to make, and most of all, they're one of a kind. Let me show you how to do this and procreate. Let's go. we're just going to hit the plus sign over here in the upper right hand corner and we're going to make a custom size of eight and a half by 11 inches so we're going to go ahead and switch this to inches by going right down here where it says inches from here we're going to go eight and a half by 11. dpi we're going to put at 300 because that is what we need for high resolution so we can make sure our image on our books is really clear. And then we just go to create. Okay, so here we are and we have our canvas. You can always flip your iPad around if you would rather draw and use Procreate in portrait mode. I just always prefer to draw like this. I'm not sure why, just a preference. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to make a galaxy type of look using the Procreate brushes that are already pre-loaded on Procreate when you get Procreate. If you go over to the paintbrush over here, if you're familiar with Procreate at all, you'll be able to see the different stock brushes that come already within Procreate when you purchase it. I believe it goes right up to, yeah, sketching right here. And then after that, you'll notice I have purchased or downloaded many free brushes over time. To make a galaxy, what we want to do is we want to select a deep black. So to go with black, you can either double tap or you can just go and look for a nice deep color. I'm going to go ahead and select this one and I'm going to drag the color onto the canvas. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a different brush. We're going to go down to brush and I'm going to go to the airbrush because I want to get some other colors in here, but I want to do it softly. And so I'm going to use the soft brush right here. Next, I'm going to find a blue, a deep blue. We're gonna to need to increase the brush size a bit. Go to right about there. And I'm going to just brush a little bit, very softly, and you'll be able to see it change a bit. Just a little bit. Okay, perfect. From here, I'm gonna go over to this magic wand tool I'm going to go down to Gaussian Blur, and we're just going to slide. And what that's going to do is it's just going to kind of blend and blur everything together so that it looks a lot nicer. It gives me a nice blank canvas for our sky. So the next thing we want to create is another layer. You do that by clicking the two squares up here, add a layer, and think of layers really as just another sheet of paper on top of another sheet of paper. That's the best way I can describe it because anything you do, as long as you have that thought in your head, it's gonna make sense. So right now I'm using another layer and I'm gonna go over to the paintbrush tool again, scrolling all the way down, and I'm gonna go to where it says luminance. And in luminance, they have all these different types of pens that you can utilize to make something like a galaxy, but my favorite is going to be Nebula. Nebula offers a really great thing where when you click a color and you start painting, it kind of adjusts the color in a very fun nebula style way. So uh, if you think of a galaxy, there's usually some pinks and some purples, some teals. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of the pink and I'm going to select a pink color over here. And then I'm just going to drag this around until I see this right here light up in a color that I really like. And I'm thinking right about there. And let's see our brush size. I like that, that's good for now. And we are on another layer, that's perfect in case we mess up. And let's just kind of start dragging our pen really lightly. Now you'll notice, let me go ahead and delete. You can delete easily by just tapping with two fingers. Now watch when we push harder. So you can get all different types of effects depending on the pressure. Now, not all brushes will react that way to the pressure, but a lot of them do, so that's something to keep in mind. So let's double tap and just get rid of that for now. 
And I'm just going to do this lightly, kind of have it go from the corner, just so you can just lightly see something here and then a little bit lighter down here. Same with up here, just a little bit lighter. I love that so far. So now we're gonna make another layer and we're gonna go ahead and pick up some purple. Now I want a little bit of deeper purple and I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time I'm going to drop the brush down just a little bit, giving us a little variety. You can also adjust the opacity over here. If you're not familiar with, op with what opacity means, it just means going more transparent or clear to more opaque or solid. So I'm gonna keep it really opaque for now, and I'm just going to kind of do the same thing I did, overlapping just a little bit, giving a little bit of variation in the color, and you'll know when you like it and when you don't. All galaxies are different. I'm gonna push my pencil down a little bit harder to get more of a dramatic look over here. I like that. And then maybe one right here. Perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add one more layer. And this time I'm going to do the teal. Now don't worry if it's not looking perfect right away. You're gonna be able to add a bunch of other things to this and make it even better. So just give yourself some time to see it all come together. And if you ever aren't sure if you like something, you can turn it off or turn on a layer to see what it looks like without it or with it. And you can also slide and delete. So you don't have to worry, it's not permanent. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we're still on Nebula, which we are. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger because this is the color that I personally really love. And I'm going to implement this more in the dark area. We're gonna do lighter, a little brighter over there, a little brighter over here. I love that, a little bit more. Now I'm gonna drop it down a little bit and we're gonna do a little brighter. You get the idea? Now I feel like I need a little bit more darkness pulling in, a little bit more deep blue. And to do this one, we're gonna go back to airbrush and we're just going to add just a little bit of deep blue in there. And again, we're just using the slightest opacity because we can build up on it. We're just going to darken that up a little bit. And I'm thinking I'm gonna add a little bit more black with the same airbrush. And we're just going to deepen that up a little bit. Okay, so from here, I really like the look of this. Um, picture the cover of your book. And um, right now I'm thinking this would be really beautiful on a journal or a diary, um, a planner. Um, all sorts of covers would look really nice with this. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer and we're gonna do some stars. Stars are very fun to do. I just go ahead and I double click up here for some white, slimmer one, because they're more spread out. Now remember, you can always edit a brush within here by changing the spacing, the jitter, the fall off, and a whole bunch of others, but that's a video for another time. But just know that any brush that is on here, you can edit to have it be more your style. So I'm gonna go with glimmer one because the stars seem more spread out and I'm just going to lightly put the stars on the book. Now, if you feel like you've done this and now maybe they're too bright or look too polka dot-ish to you, you can always go over here to your layers panel, click on the layer you're working on, click the N, and you can change the opacity down right here. So we could make those stars look even far away if we wanted. So let's say we wanted to make these ones look far away. Lowering the opacity down would do that. And then maybe we wanna push um, to add another layer and then make some brighter stars. We could choose to make them a little bigger and we can go like this so that it gives that depth and that dimension of stars in the distance and stars up close. Okay, I like that. And then another cool one that we have on here is flare. Flare, you have to be a little bit more careful because you don't want a flare that's huge like this. <laughs> At least I don't. So you're gonna wanna reduce the size down. 
flare is really pretty when used correctly and it can be used in a lot of different ways. I like to kind of just go through, choose a few, then bring my brush down a little bit more, maybe choose another few. I like to go over the top of a couple of stars that I already have, just kind of brighten them up a bit. Okay, so there we go. So there's kind of our galaxy feel. If you did want to add your text from here or to do something with text, what you would do is you would go over here to the wrench, go to add, add text, and then you would just type your text in. Okay, so what we could do is we could choose a text that we like. Let's go with chalkboard, that might be cute. Let's make it a little bigger, okay. And then let's double click that so that we can change the text. And we're just going to type in journal. Oh, actually we're going to delete that. And then we're going to type in journal and we're gonna hit the little down keyboard key and then click on the arrow. And now we can just move that wherever we want. Okay, now you can do your text in here and you can leave it like this, or you can choose like I do, and you can upload this onto your computer and then do your text and any additional editing that you wanted to do, you could do on the computer. That's how I choose to do it, but you can absolutely do everything on your iPad. From here, all you'd have to do is go over to the wrench, click share, and then choose one of these file types that you would like to save in. I prefer to save in either PNG or PDF, I believe that if you're going to be using Canva, that uploading with a PDF would not be beneficial to you. So I would choose PNG or JPEG, um, just, just so you have that information for yourself. Now that we've completed drawing our cover and we've gone to the share icon and we've gone ahead and shared it wherever we need to share it, whether that be on your iPad or for me, I sent it to my Google Drive and then downloaded it to my computer. I prefer working on a desktop when I'm using Canva, but Canva does have an app option. So you could technically complete this entire process via your iPad, just so you know. You're gonna go to Canva and you're gonna open up the page you have open for your covers. Now, if you do this in a different program like BookBolt or something else, then you just do it the same way you would any other cover. But in this case, I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I have a template here of what a cover looks like for the eight and a half by 11 type of book that I want to use. I'm gonna go over here and see my uploaded files and I currently have the design that we created. I've added some things into it, but I got the design that we created and I'm going to line it up just right, right over here for the front cover. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy this I'm going to hold down the Alt key, drag it over, and then I'm going to flip this. So you go up to flip and just click flip. There we go. And then we're done. There is our cover. So I love this because it's a very simple way to make a cover. The front and the back are the same. So when it's done, there'll be a barcode right here. I then add my text right here. I could go over and add journal, sketchbook, diary, whatever it is that I wanted to add here, perhaps a quote, but regardless, I'm done. So this is how easy it is to create a cover in Procreate and then finishing off in Canva. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.